Good morning. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. My name is Father Ed Hallinan, pastor of St. John Chrysostom Church in Wallingford. I welcome all our viewers this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we come together on this fifth Sunday of Lent, we hear the powerful gospel of Lazarus and Jesus expressing deep emotions at the loss of his friends. All of us can sort of reminisce about our own feelings when we have lost loved ones and how it has truly knocked us for a loop. As we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist, God's love for us, let us call to mind our sins, our concerns, our anxieties, and let's bring them all before the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. <clears throat> With, the, With Lord, the Lord there, there is mercy and fullness, and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With, With the mercy, Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, 
The Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies also, through the Spirit dwelling in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Your blessing, Father. May the Lord be on your heart and on your lips, so that it may proclaim the Holy Gospel for the lean well, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Martha and her sister, and uh, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters went, so the sisters sent word to Jesus saying, "Master, the one you love is ill." When Jesus heard this, he said, "This illness is not to end in death." but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. <clears throat> he said this, and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. <clears throat> so the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here, and he is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him, for Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house, comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man 
would not have died. So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial cloths, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what had been done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. For the past two Sundays, today, the third Sunday, we've heard wonderful Gospels from the Gospel of John. We've heard the story at the woman at the well who comes to believe in Christ and all of the townsfolk that she lives with comes to believe in Christ. We heard the story of the man born blind who Jesus healed. This man regained his physical sight, but because of his belief in Jesus, he began to see Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah, and it radically changed his life. Today, we hear the story of Lazarus and his two sisters, Martha and Mary. The three siblings were friends of Jesus, a place where Jesus could go and a place where, in today's language, we would use, he could hang out with them and enjoy some downtime. We see in today's Gospel that Lazarus has died. We see that Martha and Mary try to get the message to Jesus that their brother is seriously ill. We see that Jesus is not moved to get there immediately, Jesus knows more than we know. When Jesus arrives, he experiences the grief of his sisters, Lazarus' sisters, Martha and Mary, their sadness at the loss of their brother. But they also have come to believe that Jesus is more than a great rabbi, that Jesus is the Messiah, and that Jesus can call their brother Lazarus back to life. We see in this gospel story how Jesus prays to God his Father in the front of the tomb and then calls Lazarus to come out. At the amazement of everyone, Lazarus does come out. Jesus calls him back to life. This morning, I ran into one of our parishioners at, uh, at a funeral mass, and we had a conversation how to, as to how her and her husband were doing, how they were trying to navigate the coronavirus. And this parishioner shared a very touching story with me. She said that she has a, a neighbor She's unsure if this neighbor has any religious affiliation, but over the years the neighbor has shared with her that she suffers from depression. She also went on to say that this neighbor had said to her, my husband is involved in a musical community group where he needs to leave the house one or two nights a week and how this woman hates to be at home by herself. 
our parishioner, upon hearing this, invited her to come to her own home to be with her and her husband. The woman took her up on her invite. In that little story, we see how our parishioner has called this woman who has a heaviness, has an illness, has a overwhelmingness called depression. And for any of you that have ever experienced depression, it's a very brutal disease. It's a very brutal health ailment. And it is something that requires a doctor's care, sometimes medication, and sometimes talk therapy. But this woman who would experience this depression was invited to come into our parishioner's home when her husband would leave. And the woman shared with our parishioner and her husband how much this meant to her to be able to spend time with them. And even during this time of the coronavirus, this neighbor said, I miss not coming to you. If I promise to keep socially distant from you, can I still come and visit? And the parishioner has welcomed her. These are occasions where I believe all of you are putting the gospel into practice. You may not even realize that you're putting the gospel into practice by your tiny acts of kindness. And what may appear to you to be a tiny act of kindness, it's actually a tremendous act of God's love in the world. So as we continue to try to deal with this coronavirus, how in a sense we sometimes become overwhelmed, not knowing what awaits us in the future, please be attentive to God working in your midst. Please be attentive to those that are living under the same roof as you. When you see an opportunity to engage and you feel the Spirit tugging on you, please engage. When you sense a family member isn't doing well and you're able to call them on the phone, please do that. Do not underestimate God working through you. As we continue to walk in this series this season of Lent, Christ calls us to sacrifice ourselves on behalf of others. Let us take these opportunities that the Lord and the Spirit of God is giving us and let us respond in a Christ-like way. God bless you. Let us pray together, I believe, in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, we come before you asking you to listen to our prayers. <clears throat> for Pope Francis and for all our church leaders, that God will keep them in good health and safety and give them wisdom as they continue to shepherd the faithful through this worldwide pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials and political leaders throughout the world, that they will exercise wisdom as well as sound and compassionate leadership as they guide us through this crisis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our entire St. John's extended parish family, that God will protect us and keep us safe from all illness during these hard times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For everyone on the front line of medical care, including doctors, nurses, technicians, caregivers, and all those who lend support to people in need, including all those in the supply chain for providing food and essential medical items and equipment, that God will protect them and keep them from all harm, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all those who have lost their jobs, been furloughed, or had their hours cut back, that God will protect them and bring them back to prosperity and happiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, those suffering from the COVID-19, from those suffering from all other types of illness, and for their caregivers, that God will give them healing and strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those who have died from the coronavirus, that God will welcome them into his heavenly kingdom, and for their families and friends, that God will give them comfort and consolation during this time of sorrow, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For all our special petitions held in the silence of our hearts, and for the people of St. John's Parish, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for listening to our prayers, those that were articulated, those that we hold in the quiet of our hearts. We ask you to continue to bless us with your mercy, with your compassion, so that we can extend that to all whom we meet. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrament through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For his true man, he wept for Lazarus' friend, and has eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. 
Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when his wants for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, give, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Save Savior of the world, world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, Confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop, and with all bishops, priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the Apostles and the Martyrs, St. John Chrysostom, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. ask you during this time of communion to just quiet yourself and to realize the Lord dwells in you through your baptism, through your prayer, through your silence, through your acts of kindness to others. The Lord dwells in you. The Lord communes in you. So please just take a, a moment to recognize Christ's presence within you. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may be counted among the members of Christ and whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. For uh, our little children uh, from St. John uh, Chrysostom Parish and even those beyond St. John Chrysostom Parish, uh, hello to you, uh, a special uh, shout out. And I'm glad that your uh, families are uh, watching this Mass and know that uh, I miss you greatly uh, at church. And I look forward to the day when uh, I will see you again with your uh, parents in church. But just know that you're uh, missed. You're missed. To those uh, grade school and uh, high school uh, youth uh, that are out there, uh, I hope that you're uh, praying for us here uh, at St. John's. And uh, again, we, we look forward to the time uh, when you can rejoin us back here uh, at church. Uh, we, we miss you, and we miss your faces, and we miss your uh, smiles. 
to our college kids that uh, may be home a little bit uh, earlier than anticipated and, and you're watching today, uh, we're glad that you're home. We pray that you're uh, safe. Uh, we pray that your parents aren't driving you uh, crazy because you didn't expect to be with them maybe until May. And uh, hope that there are uh, peaceful uh, discussions uh, taking place uh, in, in the house. And for uh, you know everyone else, uh, again, miss seeing you and uh, so glad that we're able to communicate uh, through this gift called uh, you know technology. And uh, we're praying for you, remembering you, and most importantly, uh, looking forward to that time uh, when we can gather in church again uh, as a worshiping community. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Have a great week. God bless you.